Here we are testing a Smart for Two EBS current sensor out of the ED3 series of Smart for Twos. And you can see we have our 12 volt ground wire connected to the bus bar for the current sensing. The top pin of these two is a white one, and that is the 12 volt input. And the bottom pin, we've slid a little quick connector on, and that is the LIN bus connection. You'll notice on the current meter here, which is reading in uh, hundreds of a milliamp, that when we connect the 12 volt signal, there's just a quick pulse to one and a half milliamps or so, and then it drops to a, you know, a hundred microamps. And this can be really hard to, <clears throat> to measure on most meters, and it might be hard to know if the sensor is working at all. Um, there's a neat trick here, and that is if we take the LIN bus connection and we send it a break signal by holding it on the negative, you'll see that the current consumption goes up to about 10 milliamps. Um, after this has been on for a while, I've noticed that sometimes this will drop to about 1 milliamp, but still it is a much more significant reading than the microamps that we were reading before. You see I let go of it, and after a few seconds it drops back to the approximately 100 microamps of draw. So this would be a quick way to test your current sensor and see if it's completely blown. And uh, next we'll talk about a more thorough way to test it using an Arduino and scanning for responses on the LIN bus. So here we have the same Smart for Two current sensor connected up again to a 12 volt power supply with a milliamp current meter in line with the power. This time we've hooked it up to the T151 uh, LIN interface chip that's tied to an Arduino Mega, uh, what is that, a 2560. It's hooked up to the ground pins and I believe that is, uh, let's see, TX3 and RX3 pins for the communication. And all this is covered in the uh, Arduino code called LIN PID scan that I've put together and is offered up for free open source. So when we plug this in, we see that it connects here on the screen and it starts a scan. And these are the PIDs that are responding. And you can see that there are various data values in here. They're not all zeros. And that is indicating to us that the current sensor is responding as it should. Um, why this is reading 2.5 milliamps, I'm not quite sure. Um, I think it has gone into a lower power mode. Um, or it might be just that it's not running the test at the moment. So let me restart the test. And, uh, oops, there we go. I'll just do that by reloading the code because it's an easy way to reboot it. And now that it's running, we see, yes, uh, 12 milliamps of draw. That's the two and a half or so of the driver board plus the 10 milliamps from the current sensor. So these are all values that we're expecting on a good working sensor. So I'm going to add a couple of other diagnostic notes. Um, one is if we were to redo this with the LIN bus disconnected like that, uh, then what we'll see is a very different test result. Let me clear the data here. And we'll run it. And you see it's starting the test. And we'll sit here for about 20 seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. And it's scan completed with no data available. So that's one error that you would see if the sensor was bad. 
plus it would not be drawing current. As you saw there, it did not go up. Uh, another potential fault is, let's say, one of the wires were disconnected here, and so the Arduino was not seeing the data that it was sending out coming back. Um, and that would, that would not indicate a bad sensor. That would indicate some bad wiring. And if we run that test, then you'll see that very quickly we get a lot of zeros on the data on every PID that we scanned. So once again, that fault does not indicate a bad current sensor. That, in this case, is because I disconnected one of the communication lines. In this case, the RX pin on the Arduino 2560, which goes to the TX pin on the T151 board. While we're at it, I'll mention that the RX pin on the T151 is the black wire, and that's going to TX3 on the Arduino. The green wire is going from ground on the Arduino to ground on the T151 board. The ground on the T151 board is tied to the current sensor bus bar and also to the 12 volt circuit ground. The 12 volt power is running through this meter and coming in here to the plus 12 volt signal on the power pin on the T151, supplying 12 volts there and also through this white wire to the top pin of this current sensor when it's sitting with the labeling on top. Then the lower pin, the gray pin, is coming over here to the LIN connection. On the T151 board we do not connect the SLP and we do not connect the INH wires. I think that pretty much covers it on how to test this current sensor. I hope yours is working well.